By opting for a modest kicking of the salary cap in 2024, the Cowboys embark on the last year of quarterback Dak Prescott's contract at a cap number of $55.45 million. The Cowboys seem to be willing to let him finish the contract and see what happens. If the Cowboys are willing to let Dak hit the open market, do they have a plan at quarterback? Because right now, it feels like they're just winging it. Dak Prescott and Trey Lance have contracts that expire after 2024. But this team does have options at quarterback. One good one and a lot of bad ones. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So let's get into it. Dak Prescott has been the quarterback in Dallas since 2016, and with him under center, the team has never had a losing season. Prescott has a career record of 73 wins to 41 losses. A lot of fans are calling to get him out of town every single year. And you know, that kind of feels like where we're going to be at with fans and players. One minute you love them, the next minute you don't. It's just the way the NFL works, I guess. But I think we can say, objectively, that Dak has been an above average quarterback through a majority of his career. Has he been elite elite in games? Sometimes. Has he been terrible in games? Sometimes. Has he been what you'd hope for in the playoffs from your quarterback? Sometimes. But is Dak the sole reason that this team can't get over the hump? No. Still, the Cowboys seem like they're willing to let Dak try and test free agency based on their offseason so far. This Cowboys free agency period has been one of the weirdest that I can remember. They've signed one outside free agent. They haven't given anyone more than a one-year contract so far. The highest paid player is Eric Kendricks at $3 million. Now, moving on from Dak comes with a lot of questions, and I have a problem with it for a couple of reasons. Reason number one, there doesn't seem to be a clear-cut plan on what they want to do moving forward if Dak does leave. We're going to talk about one particular option that they might be thinking about in just a moment. Reason number two, they've lost all their leverage. By letting it get to this point, they either have to pay Dak or risk going into the unknown of not having a franchise quarterback. And this is where I have a problem with the Cowboys and how they seem to extend their players. For a team that hates overpaying in free agency, the Cowboys would be the first ones to overpay Dak after willingly letting him hit free agency. What I mean by that is, they won't pay in this offseason because they aren't sure that he's the guy. Then, next offseason, they still won't be sure that he's the guy, but they'll freak out because they don't have a quarterback, they'll see how many other teams are interested, panic, and then absolutely get killed by overpaying for Dak. When they could have just done it this year, saved themselves a lot of stress and a lot of money. And that's just the way the front office works. They are so scared to just pay the money up front that it ends up costing them on the back end. And the worst part is they do it wrong. They pay the wrong guys first, like Terrence Steele. You know why they pay guys like that first? Because they feel like they're getting a deal. But they're scared to pay the money up front. It ends up costing them years later. They could have tried to extend Dak last offseason. Why do you think Dak and his agent were so set on a four-year deal? Because of this situation right here. It's time to re-up the contract. And if not, he's just a season away from free agency. So the Cowboys have a couple of options. Extend him now and you're going to probably pay top of the market value or wait for him to hit free agency, spend even more and be over market value. That's kind of where the Joneses are at so far. Here's just a quick snippet of what I posted on Instagram and Dak's market value and what it looks like next year. Now let's consider this. What if the plan is to not pay Dak? What if the plan is to just go through this year, let Dak walk and move on? I honestly think I would be less mad at this option simply because you've made up your mind and you're taking steps towards doing that. You're not in this weird gray area where you don't know what you want to do. Do we pay Dak? Do we let him walk? Do we let him hit free agency and see what other teams are offering him? Just go with the decision. My favorite decision is when you make one. Their plan could be figure it out in 2025 with a new quarterback. An article from blog, an article from blog, this article from Blogging the Boys mentioned a particular scenario that seems to make sense. So shout out to the guys over there. They do great work. Check them out. Last preseason, Dallas gave up a fourth round pick to go and acquire the Niners third string quarterback, Trey Lance. Previously, the team's third overall pick in the 2021 draft. The weirdest part about this trade was Dallas didn't need Lance, even in a backup quarterback role. They had Cooper Rush, who had just signed a two-year, $5 million contract. Lance's cap hit alone in 2024 
is 5.3 million. So the move for Lance in 2023 felt a bit unnecessary, but that might be because we didn't at the time know that this was the plan. With Dak in the last year of his deal, the Cowboys could be looking at a Trey Lance-led team in 2025. While Prescott wouldn't be on the team anymore, he would still have a dead cap hit of $40 million. So if Dallas gave Lance a one-year deal for five to seven million dollars, then they would have 45 to 50 million in cap space tied up in the quarterback position. But that would be just for 2025. Because I think what the Cowboys are concerned with is being tied to money long-term. If they could pay Dak on a one-year contract every single year and have him play, that's what they would do. The concern is how much money you have tied up down the road. So all of that quarterback money would just be tied up in 2025. Then in 2026, you would know if Trey Lance is any good, Dak's money is officially off the books, and then you have a completely clean slate. Now, does that sound like a plan that I would get on board with? Not really because I think you're swimming out into really deep waters and the unknown is scary to think about, especially when you consider that Dallas has won 36 games in the last three seasons. You could really be staring quarterback purgatory in the face for a long time. I don't really like the idea of betting on quarterback draft classes to swoop in and save you two years from now. Like, oh, the 2026 draft class looks good. That's not good team management. And putting it on Trey Lance, who is a failed third overall pick that has barely 500 snaps to his name isn't great either. But if the front office wants to do it, they have a chance to move on from their head coach, their quarterback, their defensive coordinator all next year. A true franchise altering reset. You know, I've heard other people talk about it. It's been discussed, but I think there's a real chance that that Green Bay game made Jerry Jones realize that this team isn't winning the Super Bowl with the way it is currently constructed. They got smacked in the wild card round by a team that was the youngest in the entire playoff picture. So I think there's a chance that the Cowboys front office looked at each other and said, there's no way with this roster, with this quarterback, with this coach can win a Super Bowl anytime soon. So it's time to tear it down. It's time to move on. Maybe that's true. Maybe it isn't. But all I know is I'm terrified because if you move on from Dak, there is a much higher chance of it going terribly wrong than it does of finding somebody to lead your team to a Super Bowl in the next five years. But you guys let me know what you think down below. Do you move on from Dak and give Lance a shot in 2025 and then figure it out in 2026? Or do you give Dak the extension and try to win a Super Bowl in the next three to four years? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I love you all and I'll see you next time.